Hello everybody, how you doing? This is Mr. Douse. In this video, I'm going to um, discuss how to combine like terms. Uh, but first, I'm going to discuss vocabulary before I do anything with practice, because without the vocabulary, the practice might be a little bit confusing. So very quickly, uh, I'm going to discuss that um, what an expression, terms, coefficients, variables, and constants are. So I have an expression here. An expression is basically a mathematical um, equation that combines numbers and um, like and symbols. So mathematical symbols. So we have x is a symbol, uh, the plus and minus is a symbol. So if we combine all this together, this is an expression. Uh, and so this particular expression has three terms. And a term is basically um, uh, groupings of um, letters and variables that have a different number, uh, or different, I guess you'd say, um, variables and uh, exponents. Like we have x squared here. This is an x and then there's no x. So these terms are different because this is the only one that has an x squared. This is the only one that has an x and this one doesn't have a variable at all. Uh, so and then um, coefficients. These are the numbers in front of the, uh, the variables. Uh, so like there's 3x squared. So the coefficient is 3 here. Um, here, the coefficient is a 1 because uh, this is an implied 1 in here, so that's a 1. Uh, and there's no variable here, so just the number negative 4 consists uh, and counts as, as a coefficient. So we have negative 4. Uh, and so, uh, so coefficients are the numbers in front of the, of the, of the variables. Uh, and then the variable here is x. So what is a variable? It's just a symbol that represents any mathematical number. So I can put in a, like a, a negative 2 here, I can put in a 5, I can put in a, a 100. Uh, and so this uh, variable just represents any mathematical number. It could be a decimal fraction, anything like that. And then a constant is just a, is the term that has no variable next to it. So if I were to plug in um, an x equals 3 here, that's not going to change this term because there's no x associated with it. So um, a constant is just a number that stays constant in the expression. Uh, no matter what the variable is. So with that being said, I'm going to now solve nine practice problems. They start off yeah, pretty simple and they get a little bit more challenging as I go. Um, but these are ignoring exponents greater than one. Like up here, this is an x squared. Uh, there's going to be no x squared here. I just have an x here. I have a y over here. I have an a and a b. There's no exponent greater than one. That's keeping it simple. Uh, in the future, hopefully I'll come up with a video where we have exponents greater than two. But I'm just going to stop and keep this video um, where exponents are, are less than less than two, basically, or just one. So there are two steps that you need to use to, to simplify and combine like terms. First one is, is you organize your like terms from greatest coefficient to the smallest coefficient uh, alphabetically. Uh, and that's going to matter when I get down to six on. Uh, but step two says simplify by combining the coefficients of the similar terms. Um, that's going to be for all nine of these, and that's going to start basically with number one here. So um, I have 7x plus 4x. So simplify by combining the coefficients, so combining the coefficients of similar terms. Well, these are similar terms because they both have just the variable x here. There's no x squared here. This is not a constant. So we have an x and an x. So those are similar terms. And when it says combine the coefficients, I'm basically just going to do the 7 plus 4. And that gives me 11. And then that um, variable just kind of attaches to the end of it. That's 11x. And basically what this is is we have 7x's. So 7x is 7 times, uh, or 7x's times themselves. So that's 1 times, uh, 1x times x is 2x. 2x times x is 3x, 3x times x is 4x, all the way up to we get to 7x. And we're basically just adding 4x's to that, right? So 7x's multiplied by themselves become 7x, plus an x is 8x, 9x, 10x, and 11x. And that's how we get that 11x there. But there's a lot of work involved in doing this. So if you just add the numbers in front or the coefficients in front of these variables, you get 11 as well, and it's just a lot faster. So if I look at 4a minus 3a, um, these terms are similar terms because they both have just the a here. So those terms are similar. And so I'm just going to combine the coefficients. Well, what's 4 minus 3? Well, that's 1a. And we don't really need the 1 in front, so a is the best answer here. If you put 1a, that's correct. But a is the best answer because the 1 is not really necessary. 
Um, looking at the number three, we have 2b plus b. So again, these are like terms or similar terms because the variables basically match. So this is uh, 2b plus 1b, that gets me 3b, or 3b's. So that's what, what that becomes. And then we have 7y minus 6y. Uh, again, so variables are, are basically changing here, but the, the, the combining coefficients is basically what's, what's repeating itself here. So 7y minus 6y, what's 7 minus 6? That's 1y. But again, we don't need the 1 in front. It's implied that we have a 1 whenever we just have the variable. So that's just y. Now, number 5 gets a little bit more challenging because I now have three terms. We have the x, 2x, and 3x. But notice these are similar terms because they both have the same um, uh, variable here and the same exponent. So just x, x, and 3x. So that's basically 1x plus 2x, which is 3x. So 1x plus 2x becomes 3x, plus this last term, which is 3x. We end up with 6x's. Now, number 6 is, um, is the first time we're going to throw in the first step that we have up here. Because I, I have one term, the 4x and the negative x, but I have another term, this plus 5y. So I can't just combine all these because the x and the y, those are different variables. So it says organize your like terms from greatest coefficient to the smallest coefficient alphabetically. So what comes first, x or y? Well, x comes first. So we have 4x minus x plus 5y. And it generally doesn't really matter if you organize your terms from greatest coefficient to, to smallest coefficient. You really want to organize um, your terms alphabetically. So the 4x minus x, um, alphabetically, these x's should be in front of the y. So I put the x's in front and the y at the end. But we have the 4. This is the greatest coefficient. Uh, minus x, this is a negative 1. So I did organize this from the greatest coefficient to the smallest coefficient um, alphabetically. Um, but again, you really just need to worry about, I would say, organize your like terms um, alphabetically is what's probably really important here. So the x's are grouped in front, the y's at the end here. What's 4x minus x? That's 3x. So I've combined uh, these coefficients for the similar terms. And then we have this plus 5y. I can't combine the x and y because those are different terms. So that's going to just stay as 3x plus 5y. And the reason you can't combine these is because what if x is equal to 7 and y is equal to negative 3? Well, if you combined these and made it 8x or 8y, then you're really messing with the math here because the variables mean something different. Uh, so that's why you can't really combine those. Now, uh, 7 and 8 and 9, notice these are getting uh, quite a bit more challenging. So if I look at number 7, uh, notice we have of like terms with the, the 12x and the plus 6x, or sorry, minus 6x. We also have the plus 5 and minus 1. So we have the terms with the x's, and we have the terms that are just the constants. So I'm going to organize these with the variables with, uh, first. We have the 12x minus 6x. And then I'm going to put the plus 5 minus 1 second. And the idea is uh, constants always go to the very end here. So um, you always are going to have terms where the constants at the very end. So any, any variables that you have here, you want to organize alphabetically. Since we only have x's here, I'm going to put the x's in front. And then the constants you always want to put at the very end. And then I can combine these like terms. That gets me 12x minus 6x is just 6x. And I can combine these like terms because plus 5 minus 1 gives me plus 4. And that's really um, combining like terms. Now, beyond this, this is technically all you really need to do on the problems that I'm going to be doing. But notice they have, um, these are even numbers here. You can actually simplify this down even more because these are both divisible by 2. And you can get 2 times 3x plus 2. But I'm not going to ask you to do that. That'd be a, a different video if I asked you to do that. I'd be okay with you just leaving it at 6x plus 4 for the time being. Uh, but if I was asking you to simplify it even more, um, then you could go even beyond that. But you can kind of ignore that for the time being. Uh, so two more problems. I have this uh, 5a plus 2b minus 3a plus 3b. So um, how many different terms 
do we have here when it comes to like exponents and variables? Well, we have this 5a and negative 3a. Those can be combined. And I have this 2b plus 3b. Those can be combined. So those two um, can combine to just 2a. And then those two can combine to plus 5b. And notice I didn't write this down again. I didn't organize it that way. You could if you wanted to. But at some point, I think you start figuring out the pattern. And you can just combine like terms in your head if you want to. But if you wanted to, you could have written this down as 5a minus 3a. And then we do the plus 2b plus 3b. Because notice the a's are alphabetically in front of the b. So I group those in front. And I group the b's second because those come second. But again, notice that 5a minus 3a is 2a. 2b plus 3b is 5b. So at some point, you're going to figure out, hey, I can do this a little bit faster by skipping this step, uh, one of these steps here. Um, and then number 11, or sorry, number 9 uh, is, um, is, is the hardest problem that I'm going to do here. So notice I have 11x and I have this negative, um, negative x. Uh, that's one set of similar terms. We have this plus 4y minus 7y. That's another set of terms. And then I have this plus 9 and minus 1. That's another set of terms. So if it says organize your like terms uh, alphabetically, I'm going to start with the x's here. So I'd have my 11x. The negative, negative x. The two negatives make this a positive x. Next, I'm going to have the 4y. So plus 4y minus 7y. Uh, and then we have the constants, the plus 9, minus 1. So essentially, what we're doing here is, is I'm combining the x's and putting them in front. And then uh, alphabetically, y comes next after x. Uh, and then after that, we have the constants here. So we have the constants. So I'm going to combine those. So my 11x plus x is 12x. This plus 4y minus 7y, so 4 minus 7 is a negative 3y. And then 9 minus 1 is a plus 8. And this is how you would simplify number 9. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, if not, please come into tutoring. But this is the general idea behind um, combining like terms. So I hope this helps. Have a good day. Bye-bye.